What's up guys? Welcome to today's vlog. So on today's vlog, I'm gonna do a couple different things. I'm gonna show you guys some tips on cutting hair to make it grow. I know that sounds really weird, but we're gonna cut the hair so that it can grow because a lot of our clients request that. And I think a lot of us out there might think, you know what, I don't know what to do or what to recommend to my guest to help their hair grow. Also, we're gonna focus on this Awapui Summer Hair Revival Treatment uh, that Paul Mitchell sent me. I wanna go through those steps, but also talk about the things that I tell my guest in the salon uh, to help keep their hair healthy during the summer, which is a big struggle for a lot of people. So this doesn't really make sense to talk about this inside because it is summer. So we're gonna go outside and talk about the treatment first, then I'm gonna show you the hair cutting tips after. So hope you guys enjoy it, let's get outside. Okay guys, so here is the Awapui Wild Ginger Summer Hair Revival Stylist Kit. It's got a ton of products in it. It's got the Care Triplex Treatment, which is a deep conditioning treatment. It's got your uh, Repair Keratin Intensive Treatment from Awapui Wild Ginger, and also Awapui Wild Ginger, the Smooth Category, the Mirror Smooth Shampoo and Conditioner. It also has a little brush in here as well. Uh, I'm guessing a gentle brush. We'll see when we get it out of there. But we're gonna go through some tips. So what I wanna talk about is Summer Hair Revival in my eyes um, because this kit kind of inspires that for me so let's talk about the first tip the first tip is getting a haircut on a regular basis just making sure that you're getting your clients back in or if you're you're not a stylist and you're watching this and you go to a salon make sure you stay consistent with your haircuts because the problem is when you start to get split ends on the hair it's kind of like it, it's hard to turn it back so the more you trim your ends the healthier hair is going to be and the longer it will grow no one wants really really long straggly hair on the ends so just make sure you get those consistent appointments my recommendation for the amount of time in between haircuts is about five to six weeks you could push it maybe a little bit more than that but don't go much longer and also make sure in the summer you're not skimping on your haircuts a lot of people put off things in the summer they're on vacations or doing all these different things but you want to make sure that you're consistently getting those trims and if you don't do it in the summer it's the worst time because of the fact that you've got Sun beating down you've got salt water you've got chlorine you got all that stuff so you want to make sure stay consistent with your appointments five to six weeks in the salon and recommend that to your guests for those reasons also in Another great tip for the summer to keep your hair nice and healthy is to put in a conditioning treatment, just like, let's say, the Awapui Wild Ginger uh, Keratin Intensive Treatment. Something that's a little bit more intense than just a regular conditioner. Put that over your hair when you go to the pool, the lake, the ocean, anywhere that you're going where there's water and sun. If you overlay that in your hair and then put it up, uh, what that's going to do is help protect it. If you think about the way conditioner works or treatments work, they seal the cuticle down. If you seal the cuticle down, the bad things can't get in so that you're gonna have healthier hair in the end result. Tip number three is pretty basic, but it's really important and I think a lot of people skimp on it. Make sure that you're using a professional shampoo and conditioner every day. I recommend for the summer the Awapui Wild Ginger Moisture Lather Shampoo and Conditioner. Those are really good uh, moisturizing shampoo and conditioner. They also have a little bit of protein in it, so it pretty much has everything you need for the summer uh, to keep your hair nice and healthy. Tip number four is as important as the haircut make sure that before the summer ends you get a treatment like the Awapui uh, Wild Ginger Care Triplex treatment, something that is a deep conditioning treatment to make sure that your hair uh, gets all of the nutrients and really gets that love that it deserves after being beat up a little bit throughout the summer. So those are my four tips. Make sure you get a haircut on a regular basis. Make sure you put that leave-in treatment or deep conditioning treatment in your hair before you go out to the pool, chlorine, lake, anywhere there's gonna be salt and chlorine. You wanna load your hair up, tie it up in a bun, and then keep it protected that way. Also, make sure that you're using a professional product every day when you shampoo and condition. And number four, get a very intense deep conditioning treatment before the summer ends. Don't wait till your hair is already messed up you want to keep consistent with that so your hair stays nice and healthy throughout the summer thank you to paul mitchell for sending me this awapui wild ginger summer hair revival kit so now we're going to get to the step-by-step -step video of how to cut your hair and what to look for to make sure that your client's hair is growing nice and long and strong all right guys let's get back inside so to all my hairdresser friends out there i want you to understand that i'm building this video for both you guys and also 
consumers out there because I want people to understand the importance of going to a hairdresser to get their uh, split ends trimmed or to make sure that they don't end up with split ends in the first place. So um, we talked about how to take care of it from a product standpoint, recommendations, how often you should come in. But now I want to get really deep down into what's happening in the industry. And there's a lot of YouTube videos out there. There's a lot of people on YouTube that don't do hair for a living, um, are not professionals at doing hair, and they're posting videos about how to trim your split ends at home. So I want to talk about a few of those techniques that I've seen and why they don't actually work and then I want to show you guys what I do in the salon with my guests to make sure that they keep their hair nice and healthy and what to look for to make sure that you don't actually have split ends because most of the videos that I see out there they're not actually showing you split ends they're showing you shorter pieces of hair and I'll explain that in a little bit so we're gonna get started I want to show you guys those techniques that I've seen on YouTube that are not the correct way and then I'm gonna show you guys the things that I would do to help take care of the hair and what to look for. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the couple techniques that I've seen on the internet for cutting split ends off of the surface of the hair. So the first one is taking a panel of hair, holding it in between your two fingers like this, and then bending your fingers back. So then you see these little hairs poking up as you go through. So what they do is they take the hair, they bend it like this, and then they run their scissor over top of the hair to cut those little hairs that end up popping up and sticking out. The challenge with this is that those little hairs that are sticking out are not split ends. So what you're doing is taking hairs that had maybe been broken off and you're cutting into them, but here is one that you're calling a split end. So it's a piece of hair that is longer. So a split end happens on the very tip, the very end of the hair where the hair just starts to fray and split. And then what that does is it breaks that piece of hair into a couple different strands. This is a full strand of hair. So as you go through and you twist and bend throughout, what you're doing is you're actually cutting those hairs that are working their way, growing out, you're cutting them shorter in the head. Same thing goes with the second technique that I saw on the internet, which is just another uh, creative version of what we're talking about. Now, when you twist the hair up like this, what happens is you see those little hairs coming out again. Again, those are longer hairs. Those are not split ends. So when somebody tells you when you see on the internet to twist the hair or bend the hair in your fingers and cut it and you're cutting your split ends off, that is not the truth whatsoever. So the next thing that I wanna show you guys is these little hairs that stick out from the head. All of that is broken hair. Hair does break, it breaks off, you lose it, it grows out, it's part of life. So you wanna make sure all these little hairs, they don't necessarily mean that you're not taking care of your hair, that they're split ends. It could mean that they're just hairs that are regrowing out. Also, the reason that you could have these little tiny hairs sticking out is if you're not taking care of your hair when you're blowing it dry, when you're using heat, when you're using a lot of tension on your wet hair. So make sure if you have the time, let your hair air dry as much as possible with a nice conditioning treatment in it, and then go through and just blow dry as much as you need to. The less the less heat you have on your hair, the better. And then when you go through to iron your hair, make sure you have a protectant on there, uh, Paul Mitchell Hot Off The Press, something like that. You could recommend anything that is a thermal protectant to go over the hair as you iron it, just helps cut down on that heat damage. So that's one of the best tips I have for making sure that you don't have those little hairs and you're not breaking extra hair that you didn't need to in the first place. So now if you have a guest that comes into your salon that's trying to grow their hair out, they haven't been in the salon in quite a while so they have those split ends, or if you're somebody out there hasn't been into a salon in a while, you're gonna have to get a nice cleanup. And the way that I like to do a cleanup is to make sure that I completely blow dry the hair and smooth it out. That way I can really see split ends. You can't really see split ends as well when the hair is wet. So what I do is I smooth and polish the hair out and then I can really see where that hair is weak at the bottom. So if we look at this, you can see right through here, that's where it gets a little bit weaker. Um, so we wanna add some strength and a bold line to that or you can even break it up, but you need to take the hair up just a little bit. The other thing is you wanna look at inside the layers. So what I'm gonna do is not only smooth her out to look at the bottom, but I'm gonna smooth her out to take a look at the layers as well. So when I pull this out here, I can take a look at each individual hair. Now, you're gonna almost see like a discoloration on the edge of each split end. 
So it should be a nice blunt line, but if you see that little, it's almost like a, a white color on the very tip of the hair, or it, it's just, it's the way that the light reflects off of something that's splitting. So you're gonna see it. You can see it a lot better under brighter lights, but just keep your eye out for those split ends. If you pull the layers up and you see that, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you cut it. Also, I look at this, you look at all the density that happens right in here. If I come to the side, this has a lot more strength and density. And then when you get to these ends, they almost disappear in the light because they're just very weak. So you could see how it's a little more frayed. So what I wanna do is get nice, clean, feeling on that. That's really the key thing here. So if we're doing a full haircut, we're cutting a bob, that's gonna take care of all of the split ends that she has. But if she's trying to grow her hair and she doesn't wanna lose, she wants the least amount cut possible, then you gotta go through and you just gotta clean it up and get it started so that she can move on the path of growing her hair longer. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll assess and go over the overall shape of the haircut. So this haircut starts shorter in the front, goes a little bit longer, has more of a face frame feel, uh, very broken on the bottom. If that is the current uh, haircut that she likes that she's trying to grow out, then what I'm gonna do is base how I clean this up completely around that shape. So we'll bring everything here on the front forward and we'll cut it blunt uh, to clean it up. And then everything in the back, we're gonna pull straight down. We're gonna cut that. Then we're gonna clean up the layers from there. So we'll start in the very center back, take a, vertical parting down, then from the occipital bone over to the ear. I'll comb the rest of that hair up and clip it away. I'm not gonna twist it too much because I want to keep it uh, nice and organized. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, just like this, and then slide the clip up underneath. So it's really important to me that I get a strong baseline to start. So if you see right here how weak that looks, but where does the strength start? Uh, the strength starts right in here. So that's where I'm gonna start my line because you really want at the end result to see those clean lines throughout the haircut. If I start too low, it's never gonna look like I even did anything. Uh, and it's not gonna build up that density, keep the hair healthy and all of that. We'll have those short hairs in there already that are, have those split ends as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift the hair, put it in my comb, tap it down, and then I'm gonna bring it all the way to that point and I'm gonna just cut blunt straight across. That's gonna give me that blunt line, right? And I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I will hold this little bit in my fingers with light tension to clean off that edge. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite edge. So that gives us our nice blunt edge on the cut. What I'm gonna do is continue all the way up the back of the head shape, bring everything down, cutting it blunt, then we'll go through and layer it afterwards. The other thing you're gonna notice when you comb all the hair over top, so now this is the rest of the haircut, there's a lot of layers in here, so really barely anything reaches that bottom point. So what I'll do is just comb everything down. This is the big difference between cutting wet hair and dry hair. Being able to see that blunt line, see the density, see where the hair is weak, um, and go through and cut it uh, nice and heavy throughout the rest of the haircut. So I'll start by cutting this straight line across. So it's already looking healthier. We haven't even gotten into the layering part. So now let's work on the face frame. So what we're gonna do with the face frame is depending on where they part their hair. We're gonna say it's off the center for this mannequin, uh, but as your guest in the salon, you wanna make sure it's it left or right, then you will part it there and you'll do exactly what I'm doing with that uh, type of sectioning. So this is center parting. So what I'm gonna do is just take those diagonal uh, back partings. So diagonal back off the head and bring it over to me. So you can see where it gets a little bit weak right towards the tip of the hair. I'm actually gonna go in about an inch and a half because what would run into is that all this hair wouldn't reach over so we wouldn't be cleaning up everything. So this is more like a guest that hasn't been in the salon for probably about six months, maybe eight months, um, is the really the, the feeling I get when I look at her hair. So just bringing everything over, diagonal back parting, Bring it over to me, 
find that blunt guideline. There's the weak hair that we're cutting and we're cleaning it up. Now the other thing I want you guys to know about this whole process is that I'm gonna do this cut, but then later I can do dry detail work to really customize this and make it her own cut. So if she doesn't want all these blunt ends, that's fine, but I wanna cut the blunt ends first, get her hair nice and cleaned up, then I'll go through and stylize it after. So if you guys can see already, take a look at this blunt clean line that we have here, which I'll clean up even a little bit more, and then look at this kind of weaker uh, frayed line that's here. So that is definitely a lot healthier looking than this. And now as it grows out, it'll stay healthier. All right, so now we wanna match the right side up with the left side. So what I'm gonna do is take diagonal back parting again, bring a little piece from the left side with me so I can see where that's at. And just remember, we're cleaning off the weak parts of the hair. So just cutting a blunt line on that. So now we've got a nice face frame that really connects. It looks nice and healthy. We have a nice baseline. The last thing that we need to do, is we need to go through our layering in the back of the head. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna work pie shape sections or pie shape partings all the way around the head shape, around the crown of the head. That should bring everything in from the bottom and clean it all up nice. All right, so I take my pie shape parting out of the back, uh, center back of the head. The good thing about layering is you could decide to elevate nice and high, cut these layers. You would definitely take off all of those split ends. You could see right here, let's put it up against my shirt a little bit. You can see right here where that gets weak. So that's all the stuff that I wanna cut off. The other great thing about layering is the fact that no matter how short I cut this, it still keeps her length on the bottom nice and healthy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to elevate the hair up I'm gonna cut from that point, which is right grabbing a guide from my bottom section. So I know that I'm connecting that and removing as much of those dead ends as possible. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna cut blunt lines through this part of the hair, right? So we go through and we cut those nice and blunt. Um, normally when I'm cutting in the salon, I would cut right up to my finger just like this, work my way across, nice and healthy. Same thing, pie shape section off of that. I'm gonna over direct it back just a little bit. Not too much though, because the more over direction I do, what's gonna happen is eventually, when I get to the side and I'm over directing it over, I'm gonna miss some of those split ends in the side. So I don't wanna over direct it all the way to the center. So straight back from the head, I can see that line in there, and then just cutting those nice blunt lines through creating layering, creating movement within the haircut without touching the length of the cut. So same thing on the opposite side, um, taking that pie shape parting or pie shape motion, bringing that to the center first, cutting blunt line. Same thing, work my way through, grab a little bit of that last previous uh, parting that I had and then over directing it back, cutting your blunt line. So I think the overall story with this guys is just find that rhythm, use proper sectioning so that you make sure that you cut every hair. When your guest comes into the salon, what's happening is they get multiple different types of haircuts. Um, they're getting color services. They're breaking their hair at home using a blow dryer. There's a lot of things that go into why hair uh, has split ends and why it breaks. So we need to keep, make sure that we keep everyone on a proper schedule of coming in, getting their hair cut, doing it the right way so they get the right result, and then they're not going on YouTube and searching for all these crazy weird techniques that really have nothing to do with split ends. So, Hope you guys liked this video. If you did like the video, then make sure you subscribe below because we constantly have new videos about different hair tips, different things you guys can do with your hair, whether you're a hairdresser or a consumer, it's always good to learn about your hair and then go ask your hairdresser to do these things for you because you'll get it done the correct way. So again, make sure that you share this video with any of your friends out there, clients, anything, uh, so that they get the proper education on 
what a split end really is and also how to take care of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. All the links to all the products I talked about are in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments also if you like this style of video. Usually it's a little bit different, so hope you guys liked it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget, check out freesaloneducation.com. We have over 600 videos. Also, use that code MATBECKVLOG at checkout. Get 20% off a lot of different products on our web store. And make sure that you join our FSE Partner Program. That is a program where we do live classes for free for stylists. All you got to do is sign up. Go to fsepartner.com. You can sign up for that for free. You'll get the alerts about the live classes. And also, if you are not a stylist and you like this cut and you're looking for a new hair salon, go to our website, hairsalonlocator.com. That's where we put all of our FSE Partner Salons so that you guys can find a great stylist to create this look for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.